Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones. We're going to get into the question, what is the R value of two inches of spray foam insulation? Very fascinating question. In our previous video, before this one, we did, is one inch enough? And this is sort of a follow-up to say, all right, if you're getting more, what are the insulating values going to be? Thank you for subscribing to Spray Jones. New videos that are currently in the works will be waterproofing and vapor barriers, thermal scans and studs, cathedral ceilings, everything you want to know with that, bugs and spray foam, huge subject, condensation control, and container homes. So we'd love to have you and check out the playlist because there's probably some videos there that we've already done that you may have questions for. Okay, now on to our question. Spray foam insulation uses gases trapped inside the cells of the foam to be the insulating layer. So the polyurethane foam is a medium material for holding the cells or creating the cells which then hold and trap and contain the gas. If you're using open cell foam, it's a water blown, steam blown, or carbon dioxide is the technical term, carbon dioxide blown foam. But when you are asking a question like what is two inches, the R value of two inches, that is going to be a closed cell two pound density per cubic foot foam insulation question. That product is Freon blown. We use a liquid Freon inside the resin when the trigger on the gun is depressed and the two products meet, the hardener and the resin material, the liquid is converted from liquid state to gaseous state. That's called a phase change. Those, that gas, that freon, causes the cells to be created. Instead of a hard cellular polyurethane plastic laying on the wall or the floor or the ground, instead it puffs up into cellular format. A closed cell foam will be 25 times expanded from the liquid mass that was installed. Normally, you're going to be dealing with about 1.5 million cells per cubic inch. Out of that cubic inch in those cells, Freon is now trapped inside the cells, and that is what is providing the insulating layer uh, to your insulation. We have a rating system that is rated to 30 years called LTTR. It stands for long-term thermal resistant values and the reason being is that you want to know 10, 20, and 30 years from now what is the worst case scenario for closed cell spray foam insulation because when you initially apply it the insulating value is incredibly high. In fact I would say around R10 an inch is what it will be in the first day and month. But over time, that gas is going to leak out and be replaced by oxygen. It's going to lose some of its potency. So the LTTR is developed to give you a long-term resistant value that is never going to change after the 30-year mark. So as you can see from this chart that I have in front of you, you're going to be rating at an R6 for the first inch and an R12 for or 13 for two inches. Now the most important thing to relate this back to is not just the R value but the BTU retention and I've done a specific video on how much spray foam do I need where we get into that exact question so click the link here and watch that video if you want to know more. But when you are hiring someone to install two inches or three inches I want you to know that it's not just the R value of an inch, which would be six, multiplied by the thickness of the spray foam. Why is it not that way? Quite simply, you have to rate it on a one inch value, a two inch value, and a three inch value. But you have to look at the accumulated insulation value of the core cells. So, on a three inch application, the middle let's say inch and a half of foam if you took a core section out you've got so much on the top so much on the bottom but the core middle that's an inch and a half thick that gas is not able to leak out easily and be replaced by oxygen so as a result the core 
value stays much, much higher than just rating it as the same as it would be for a one inch layer. Does this make sense? So it's not just our R value of six multiply out by the thickness. And as you can see in this chart, a three inch value, if we came down here and went to three or 3.1, because you're always gonna be thicker, it's not six times three. So it's not an R value at an inch is six. And we multiply that by three, it's not 18. It's gonna be 20. And the reason being is that the gas in the core is not leaking out and being replaced by oxygen. It's not diluting. So as a result, if you take a value of, let's say, four or five, let's go to five, five inches is an R33. So in this instance, uh, your insulation value per inch is climbing at 6.6, .6, or it's averaged at 6.6 .6 an inch. So when you are hiring a contractor, when you're looking for answers to your questions on your spec, how much resistance value per inch do I get? You need to go to a chart like you're seeing here, a long-term thermal resistance values chart for the specific product that you're buying. This is BASF's wall type. And choose the thickness of foam that you want. In your situation, if you're, if you're getting two inches, you come down here on the chart to two, and there you go, R13. Or if I'm gonna go to five, R33. This is the proper way to do your specifications and know exactly what your ratings are going to be. And then you know how much foam you're going to be putting in. Another thing that I like to point out to people is that the foam is going to vary in thickness. So you're going to be a little bit under in certain areas and you're going to be a lot more over in other areas. So it's best to average it. If we're going for a two inch application, like we would see right here, uh, I would be anywhere from two and a quarter inch to one and three quarter inch. So the averages at 13 are more than fair because you're gonna have a number of areas that are gonna be over and the entire job's gonna average out much, much higher. So I hope this is of a help. Uh, we've got a number of other videos on insulation values, BTU retentions, substrates that the foam can be sprayed to. I think it'll be helpful to you if you click on those links, click on those playlists, check them on out. Hit the subscribe button and the like and the share if you haven't. Comment on the video. We'd like to catch you up on the next one, and we'll see you soon.